from Philippians chapter 4. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. What are you anxious about? What has your attention? Consciously bring these into the presence of God. He is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What good things do you enjoy thinking about? What is true, noble, right? pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. Think about that now. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8 and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Do you believe this? How do you reconcile this truth with the anxieties you were thinking about earlier? You may remember the story of Joseph. At the beginning of his story, things are going quite well for Joseph. He works for his father, he is his father's favorite son, and he even has some snazzy clothes. But his brothers are jealous of him, and when he tells them about a set of dreams he has had in which they are bowing down to him, 
they decide they would kill him. Luckily Reuben, the eldest, talked them out of killing him and convinced them instead just to throw him in a pit in the wilderness. Now Reuben's plan was to come back for Joseph later and get him out of the pit and safely home. Unfortunately, when Reuben left the other brothers hung out to eat dinner and a Midianite caravan came by. So the other brothers pulled Joseph out of the pit and sold their own brother into slavery. They took his clothes and covered them in goat's blood and told their father he was killed by wild animals. The Midianites sold Joseph to Potiphar in Egypt, the captain of Pharaoh's guard. Now here's Joseph. He's lost everything, his family, his job, his homeland, everything. And just at this point, scripture says, and the Lord was with Joseph. And things start looking up for Joseph. He's successful in his new master's household, and his new boss sees that the Lord is with him, and that things left under his care do well until eventually he entrusts everything to Joseph. He lets Joseph manage everything. The scripture says the, the only thing he concerned himself with was the food he ate. But just when everything is going well for him, things take a nasty turn. Joseph was a handsome young man, we are told, and his boss's wife took a shine to him and invited him to sleep with her. When he refuses, she decides she's got to have him, and so she waits until they are alone one day and grabs him by the robe and says, Come to bed with me. But Joseph runs away, and she clutches his robe, and when she sees that he has rejected her, but that she has his robe in her hand, she decides to get revenge and cries, Rape! When Potiphar gets home, he is furious and throws Joseph in prison. Again, Joseph is back at the bottom of the barrel. And again, these words appear in the story, and the Lord was with Joseph. So Joseph finds favor with the chief jailer, and the jailer begins to entrust Joseph with more and more responsibility, and everything Joseph touches prospers. In prison, Joseph interprets the dream for a pharaoh's chief cupbearer. And later on, when the cupbearer is released and restored to his position, the pharaoh has a dream, and the cupbearer remembers Joseph. Pharaoh sends for Joseph immediately and says, I have heard that you can interpret dreams. I cannot do it, but God will give you the answer you desire, Joseph responds. So Pharaoh tells Joseph about his dream where seven skinny cows eat seven fat cows, and another where seven shriveled heads of grain eat up seven full heads of grain. Joseph explained to him that there was going to be a famine in all the land, and then explained to him how to prepare for the famine and save the people from starvation. And Pharaoh, just like Potiphar and the chief jailer, puts Joseph in charge of everything, everything in his kingdom, because he can see that the Lord is with him. When the famine does come, Joseph's brothers have no choice but to journey to Egypt where they have heard there is grain for sale. Ten of them come without Benjamin, looking for food to take back home. Joseph recognizes them and pretends to think they are spies and sends them back for their brother Benjamin. They go back and eventually come back with Benjamin, and when they do, they are sent to Joseph's house. When Joseph comes home, he asks, how is your aged father you told me about? Is he still living? They replied, Your servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they bowed down, prostrating themselves before him. As he looked about and saw his brother, Benjamin, his own mother's son, he asked, Is this your youngest brother, the one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room and wept there. After he had washed his face, he came out and, controlling himself, said, Serve the food. And they feasted and drank freely with him. 
Later, Joseph comes up with a plot to keep Benjamin in order to get them to bring their father, his father, back to Egypt. And when Judah begs to trade places with Benjamin for the sake of their father, Joseph can't handle the charade any longer. And he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. And Pharaoh.